Did you know that Flutter is not only used to develop applications but also to create video games? For example, look at how the developers of PUBG Mobile used Flutter for the social part of their game, where a graphics engine is not needed. Or if the graphical part is required, check out this pinball example that the Flutter team created to demonstrate how to use Flutter for this purpose. And what can we say about the Flame engine, a 2D engine built on top of Flutter that can allow you to create all kinds of interactive experiences, through the use of traditional sprites, particles, collisions, etc. Along with the latest version of Flutter, Flutter 3.16, the team also communicated news regarding the Casual Games Toolkit, a collection of resources that includes several repositories with examples so that anyone can get started in developing games with Flutter. In this video, I'm going to do a review of this toolkit and its new features, to see what you can expect from it. But before that, let me briefly answer a key question. What kind of games can be created with Flutter? You probably know that Flutter is a robust framework for developing cross-platform applications for mobile, web and desktop. Flutter does not use the native visual elements from the platforms where it is executed. Instead, it draws its own UI on its own canvas. For that reason, it's a very good option for creating app-like games, for example, hyper-casual puzzle games, card games, or similar. The Casual Games Toolkit is a fantastic resource here. It guides you through using sound, displaying basic graphics, handling drag events for card games, and very importantly, teaches how to use the rich Flutter ecosystem to monetize your game with ads or in-app purchases. For more complex games, like endless runners or platformers that need collision detection and a game loop, we also have the Flame engine. Flame is an open source engine built on top of Flutter and covers a wide range of needs. I've got a specific video on Flame where I introduce it and explore all its perks if you're interested. But if you're dreaming of crafting your next 3D first person shooter or an open world RPG with lots of NPCs and high end graphics, Hold up. These sorts of top tier games are a bit beyond what Flutter can handle. If that's your case, check out my new channel on game development where I dive into using the open source Godot engine for these more intensive gaming experiences. Now that we've got a handle on what Flutter can do, let's download and check the updated Flutter Casual Games Toolkit to see how it can help you get started in your game development journey. But before we jump into the main content, let's take a moment to see how today's sponsor, Brilliant, can elevate your game making skills. Brilliant is an interactive platform that sharpens your skills in programming, mathematics, and data analysis, essential skills for any developer. Say you're building a game with complex collision dynamics. You will need a good understanding of algebra. This is where Brilliant steps in. It lets you tailor your learning journey presenting engaging challenges to test your skills. And if you're ever stuck, Brilliant helps you uncover the solution, showing you exactly where you might have gone astray. With Brilliant, you can dive deep into subjects that matter to you, dedicating whatever time you have each day, even if it's just a quick five minute session. They offer a plethora of courses in algebra, vectors, geometry, and more, all vital for any game developer looking to create solid algorithms. Interested in giving it a go? Check out brilliant.org David Serrano for a free 30 day trial. Plus, the first 200 to sign up through this link will snag a 20% discount on their annual plan. A huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. And now, let's see what the Flutter Casual Games Toolkit can offer us. To have access to the example repositories, just go to flutter.dev games. At the bottom, we can access this documentation page where they give us more details. And here we can enter the GitHub project where we can clone the templates. For your convenience, I leave each of these links in the video description. Without a doubt, the most striking template is the new one they have added. This small endless runner style game that is made with flame. But before this, let's start at the beginning. The first of the templates is called basic. Let's run it to see what it's like. As you can see, it is something extremely simple. We just have to move this slider to pass the level. But the important thing about this template is not this, but that it teaches you the basic concepts of creating games with Flutter. Let's take a quick look at the source code of this template. Don't worry, I'm not going to burden you with a lot of source code. 
I just want to indicate a few things so you can see what it's for and if it's worth looking at. To start, if you go to the router.dart file, you will be able to see how to manage navigation. In this case, this project uses the GoRouter package. This is not something exclusive of games, but I think it's worth mentioning it if you're interested in learning how to navigate using routes. Now, if we go to audio, audiocontroller.dart, we can see how the music and sound effects are being managed. This part is important since we must ensure that the audio is heard on all platforms. And on both Android and iOS, we will have to silence the game when it's sent to the background. Then, the rest of the project makes normal use of Flutter widgets. For example, in this class you can see how these screens are being created just as a traditional application is created. Finally, I would like to comment that here, in the player progress folder, they are using inheritance to create a persistent system that in one case uses the memory and in the other the local storage. Again, this is not exclusive of video games, but it's always useful to see these types of practical examples. To finish, let's look at this class called confetti.dart. This class uses custom painter to draw the victory effect we saw before on the screen. For cases as simple as this, a custom painter can be useful. For more complex cases, it is better to use flame. Now let's move on to the next template. It's a game called Cards. Let's run it to see how it looks. In this case, we have something very similar to the previous one, but here we are presented with a card mechanic. This template can be very useful if what you want to create is a system of cards or draggable elements. If we look at the source code of this example, we will see that it is practically copied from the previous one. But of course, what changes here is the inclusion of the dragging mechanic. If we go to the play session folder, we can see how it shows us how to implement this mechanic using the drag target and draggable classes. The rest of the elements, such as zone management, etc., are the same as the previous template, with which I would even tell you that if you want, you can start looking at this template directly and skip the first one. Now let's quickly look at the latest recently added template which shows us how to integrate the flame engine. Let's run it to see what we have. As you can see, it's an endless runner type game where we have a character who continuously runs. Our task is to try to avoid the obstacles that come while we try to collect these little creatures that gives us points. These types of games are usually quite simple but addictive. And this template can help you understand how to create a game with these kinds of features. Let's now look at the source code. The folder structure is very similar as in the previous cases, and the elements that were shown to us in the previous templates are also demonstrated in this one. Here, however, we can go to the Flame game folder where we will see how Flame is used. Flame is an engine based on a hierarchy of components, and in the folder called Components, you can analyze each one that makes up this game. Then, if you go to the endlessrunner.dart file, you can see the base flame game with its properties. In endlessworld.dart, you will see the game world, that is, the place where the different components that make up the game are arranged. If you're interested in learning about flame, I leave you the link in the video description to its documentation, but I recommend that you then return to this specific template to try to understand it and see how it is used. In my opinion, this template is written in a fairly simple and very accessible way. I think it can be very useful if you're interested in using this tool in your projects. And there you have it, a brief rundown of the latest Flutter Casual Games Toolkit. For those of you itching for a deeper dive into the Flame Engine, just click on the suggested video you see on the screen for more insights. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.